we have here is we have 4 divided by radical 3. Now, a lot of you might come up to this answer and you say, oh, I got my answer, it's, it's done. Well, in mathematics, this is a non-simplified answer. And the reason why it's a non-simplified answer is, um, think about it this way. A radical 3, that's what we call an irrational number, meaning we can't make it um, as a fraction. Same thing as like pi, right? Pi equals 3.14159 dot, 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 dot. Keeps on going on and on forever. So if I was to divide, let's say I divided 4 divided by pi, would we ever get a, a, uh, a number that stops? Well, no, because since pi never stops, we're never ever going to get a, uh, a number that's going to stop, right? So you can't divide 4, you can't divide into, or 4 cannot be divided into pi or pi cannot be divided into four. So we have a little bit of difficulty now simplifying this. However, when you have a radical, a radical has the same properties. This square root of three keeps on going on and on and on forever. So it's, it's impossible for to divide this into our four. However, what we can do is we can get rid of this radical. And here's what we're gonna do. Square root of three times the square root of three. Whenever you multiply a radical times a radical, you can multiply the two numbers inside, the radicands, under the same radical. Now, we all know that 3 times 3 is um, 9. Or, I might also just write it like this. All right? Because either way, it doesn't matter. This cancels out, and that cancels out to give you 3. Or, the square root of 9 equals 3. So there's multiple ways. I just want to show you this because a lot of times you won't get a square number and you might have to do like the square root of x or a square root of x squared. So you should know that the square root and something squared are inverse operations of each other so they cancel out to give you uh, your radicand. So if I know if I multiply this by the square root of 3, I'll get to 3. Well, that's what I'm going to do. So I multiply by the square root of 3 and multiply the top by the square root of 3. Now, why did I multiply the top and the bottom? Well, if I wanted to multiply 1 half times 4, I'll get 1 eighth. 1 eighth does not equal 1 half. So if I want to keep this fraction true, I have to multiply the top and the bottom by 4. Therefore, 1 half equals 4 eighths. So I'm I'm multiplying, I'm changing the problem, but I'm not changing the fraction. So as long as I multiply the, my top and my bottom by the square root of 3, I'm keeping my fraction intact. 4 times square root of 3 equals 4 times radical 3. That is a radical. That's a whole number. I cannot combine them. It's not radical 12 or it's not the number 12. And square root of 3 times square root of 3, we already proved, is going to equal 3. All right. And if you did want to do, uh, write this as a rational, you could write 4 thirds multiplied by radical 3. That's another way you could write it. Just want to express it because a lot of math books and texts will show them in you know, different ways. So you should know, you know either way works.